Hello recruit, and welcome to an Ash Junior Academy Extra. Last semester, you learned how to obtain natural resources using your terrain tool in the soil centrifuge, and last week, we discussed how you can create refined resources with the chemistry lab. There is another way to obtain all of these resources, however, the trade platform. The trade platform schematic is unlocked in the research catalog with 2,500 bytes and is crafted on the medium printer from one tungsten, one iron, and one exo chip. When unpacked, it is a large tier three module that can be attached to any platform or vehicle with a tier three or larger attachment slot. The trade platform does not require power though, so you can forego a platform if you wish. It will work just fine sitting on the ground. The trade platform consists of two main pieces. The lower portion is a small specialized landing pad and features a control panel and the rocket in the center that allows you to attach resources and will return with resources and items attached. Let's begin with the control panel. The top third of the control panel features a display that conveys information about the resource you are trading and what you will receive in return. You can scroll left and right within this display to select a different resource to receive. The trade platform defaults to the menu to trade scrap for natural resources, and as you scroll through the available resources, you will see the display update to indicate not only how many scrap nuggets are required, but also how many natural resources you will receive in return. This is expressed as a ratio since you can attach additional scrap to receive multiple of each natural resource. For example, the trade from Malachi is expressed as a one-to-one -one ratio. For each scrap you attach, you will receive one Malachite. So if you attach six scrap, you'll receive six Malachite. If you select Hematite, you will see the ratio change to three to two, meaning you will receive two Hematite for every three scrap. Those same six scrap will now return a trade of only four Hematite. You can easily scroll through the menu to discover the ratio for each natural resource. There are eight dots below both the scrap and the resource icons that represent the eight tier one slots on the trade platform's rocket. When no scrap is attached, these dots will appear as a white outline. As you attach scrap, the dots will fill in solid white or solid magenta. When they are all solid white, that indicates you have attached a sufficient number of scrap and you will receive the number of resources indicated by the solid white dots under the resource icon. If all the dots are magenta, that means you have not yet attached enough scrap to the rocket to receive your selected resource. If some of the dots are white while the others are magenta, that typically indicates that you have attached more scrap to the trade platform rocket than is currently needed to receive the indicated number of resources. For example, if I attach three scrap to the trade platform and select lithium as my desired resource, all three dots are magenta, indicating that I need to attach at least one more scrap to the rocket. If I move one resource to the left and select Titanite, two dots are now white and one is magenta, meaning that I have one too many scrap to receive one Titanite. If I attach one more scrap, the magenta dot will become white and the dots under the resource icon now indicate that I will receive two Titanite. Once you have attached a sufficient quantity of scrap to the trade platform's rocket, the big green button at the bottom right of the control panel will light up, indicating that you can launch the rocket to initiate the trade. Press the button once to open the translucent cover over it and a second time to launch the rocket. Each trade takes approximately 45 seconds. Where that rocket actually goes is anyone's guess. Once it returns from its mystery destination, the scrap that was attached will be replaced by the resources you had selected at launch. As we discussed earlier, you do not have to attach the trade platform to a base module platform, but there are advantages to doing so. Doing so means that any scrap attached to storage on the same platform will automatically load onto the trade platform rocket slots. In fact, it will load the maximum number of scrap possible to ensure your trade nets the highest number of resources possible. So if you select ammonium for your trade and you have eight scrap available, all of the slots on the rocket will be filled and the rocket will be ready to launch. The advantages to using a platform do not stop there, however. When the trade platform rocket returns from a trade, the attached resources will automatically slot to any available storage slot on that platform. This automatic loading and unloading can really come in handy, especially when you're going to be trading a large number of items. 
You can also quickly attach scrap from your backpack onto the trade platform rocket by simply placing the simulation cursor over one of the scrap holograms and using the quick stow option. If you need a quick refresher on quick stow, be sure to check out the Astropedia. This information is all well and good, but without scrap, it becomes a purely academic discussion. So let's take a few minutes and talk about scrap and how you can obtain it. Scrap can most commonly be obtained by placing most crafted items or debris into a shredder. Granted, shredders have limitations on the size of items they can shred into scrap, so we should really put a pin in the scrap discussion and first talk about the various shredders. The medium shredder is unlocked in the research catalog for 1,250 bytes, or as you will learn in next week's Astroneer Academy Extra, you can unlock it and receive one for free by completing the relocation package mission. You can print additional medium shredders on the small printer using two iron each. Once unpacked, it is a medium tier two sized item that must be placed on a platform connected to your power network in order to function. In fact, all shredders must be attached to an appropriately sized platform in order to use them. When active, the medium shredder will consume power at a rate of five units per second. Being the smallest available, the medium shredder can only scrap small tier one size objects and debris along with debris bundles. The large shredder schematic is unlocked in the research catalog for 2,500 bytes and is created on the medium printer from one tungsten carbide, one iron, and one exochip. When unpacked, it is a large tier three item and when active, it will consume power at a rate of 7.5 units per second. The large shredder can shred medium tier two or smaller items and debris, including everything that can be shredded in the medium shredder. The largest and most capable shredder is the extra large shredder, which can shred large tier three or smaller items, including everything that can be shredded in the smaller shredders. You will need 5,000 bytes to unlock its schematic in the research catalog, and it is created in the large printer from one tungsten carbide, one steel, and two exochips. When active, the extra large shredder consumes power at a rate of 10 units per second. Given its size, your options are fairly limited for the extra large shredder. It can only fit on an extra large platform A, extra large platform C, or on an empty large rover. In Astroneer Academy 204, we will begin discussing the concept of building a well-organized base. But until then, it is good to know that a shredder is a valuable addition to any base. Not only will you be able to utilize a shredder to obtain scrap for use with the trade platform, but you can also help keep your base organized by shredding any items that you're no longer using. This will help you avoid a scenario where you're surrounded by unused terrain tool augments, small platforms, or storage made obsolete as you unlock larger, more useful storage. I personally like to keep a shredder nearby when completing limited time events as well. While we will discuss limited time events in depth in Astro Academy 305, it is worth pointing out that they will periodically reward you with very items that you may not find particularly useful, especially if you have already made significant progress in your adventure. I find that the numerous small power producers and various automation related sensors and buttons are not particularly useful to me for the most part, so I drop them directly into a shredder to avoid letting them pile up in a big mess. Make sure you plan on having the biggest shredder possible in your base to help keep everything neat and tidy. Similar to all other modules that require power, your shredders will continue to operate even if they are not fully powered, though at a slower rate. To scrap an item, simply hold it in the air just above the shredder, paying attention to where it appears to snap into place, then let go. The shredder will grab the item and begin shredding it into scrap. You should use caution around all shredders as it can be quite easy to accidentally place an item into the shredder. This can be especially frustrating if you unintentionally scrap any storage that contains other items or resources. Your items will scatter to the ground and your storage will be destroyed. You should also exercise caution when handling dynamite near a shredder. Should you place a dynamite into a shredder, you will find that your shredder, along with possibly other surrounding items and even you, may experience a rapid, unexpected disassembly. 
If you wish to shred large items that do not fit into a shredder, you will need to utilize dynamite to destroy that item first, which will cause it to be broken down into several smaller pieces of debris that will fit into a shredder. This is also the only way to shred most land vehicles as you're unable to pick them up to place them into a shredder. All shuttles are too large to fit into a shredder as well, so you must first blast them apart using dynamite. Many pieces of this debris will be large tier 3 items, making the extra large shredder the most versatile of the three options available. As we discussed a moment ago, you can obtain scrap from shredding not only the items that have been crafted on a printer, but also from shredding the debris you find scattered about the surface and caves of all planets and moons in the civil planetary system. Much of this debris will fit into the various shredders, though some items are simply too large. Like crafted items that are too large for a shredder, you must first destroy this large debris using dynamite. It too will be blasted apart into several smaller pieces that you will be able to shred. I would like to pause here for a moment to discuss dynamite a bit further. We have mentioned it several times and even unlocked it in an Astronaut Academy 106 Extra, but we haven't looked at it closely. We unlocked it last semester for 3,750 bytes in order to complete the Advanced Explorer Kit mission. You can create it with a small printer or your backpack printer from one explosive powder. That explosive powder is created in the chemistry lab from two carbon and one unit of sulfur. Similar to packagers, dynamite can be attached to just about anything and becomes armed when you attach it to something. You can tell it is armed by looking for the small red lights. When activated, it begins to beep and the small red lights will begin to turn off, counting down the detonation. Anything within the blast radius, including you, will be destroyed. If there are resources within the blast radius, they'll be harvested. If you are worried about accidentally activating dynamite, it can be safely stored by placing it in any storage slot. When stored in this manner, it cannot be activated for detonation, though it can still contribute to an even larger detonation if it is within the blast radius of any other explosion. Because of this, you will want to use caution when transporting dynamite, even if it is inactive due to being attached to storage. If you encounter hazardous flora that fire explosive projectiles, they can detonate any nearby explosives, including dynamite. And of course, as we have previously discussed, you will want to keep dynamite out of the shredder and smelting furnace, unless of course you're trying to destroy those. As I mentioned just a moment ago, anything within the blast radius, including other explosive resources, will be destroyed. Those other explosive resources will create an even larger explosion, increasing the overall blast radius. If you place an incredibly large quantity of explosives in one area, the resulting blast radius from an explosion can become enormous, large enough to remove substantial portions of a mountain or even blast a crater deep into the second or third layer of the cave region. I'm going to pause the course here for a moment because, well, I want to look at that again. I truly thought I would be far enough away from the main blast, but I underestimated just how large that blast radius would be. I guess 5,760 hydrogen aren't to be messed with. Thankfully, I made a copy of that instance of the training simulation before setting off the dynamite, so I loaded the simulation in creative mode just so we can do that again without the blast taking me out. And yeah, I kind of broke the simulation just a little bit. It is clearly struggling to process what I have just done. In fact, the first attempt broke the simulation as well. The compass did not display a death marker at all, though I was able to return to that fateful point. The items from my backpack were there, but there was no death marker. Jumping back into the second instance of that blast and just look at this massive hole. Friends, be careful when you have a lot of explosive material in one place. Now, back to the course. You may have noticed that most debris you encounter includes a tooltip for quick access to the Astropedia. 
If you press and hold the indicated input, the Astropedia will automatically open to the alternate crafting page of the crafting section, revealing basic information about the trade platform and other alternate ways of obtaining resources. That brings us to a pro tip for collecting a great deal of scrap quickly and easily. All of the shredders can be attached to a vehicle and function quite well as part of a mobile shredding unit. Once you have any size shredder available, you can attach it to an appropriate size land vehicle along with enough power for the vehicle and shredder and begin an expedition to collect scrap. You have encountered numerous debris items throughout your adventure by now, so you should have no trouble locating debris and make quick work of turning it into scrap. Not only will you have some scrap for the trade platform, but you will also be working toward making the planet a bit cleaner. As a bonus, you will frequently discover full nuggets of scrap in and on the debris that you will be seeking out for shredding. You can, of course, also create scrap farms that utilize automation to create and shred items automatically, but we'll explore that idea further when we discuss automation. But what if you don't have the power or resources available to create a mobile shredder setup? Well, you still have options. Some debris can be quite small and when picked up and placed into your backpack or a storage slot, collect into debris bundles. Five small pieces of debris can be collected into a single debris bundle and once it is full, a new debris bundle will be created if additional scrap is collected. These debris bundles can be quite convenient as they allow you to easily collect a large quantity of small debris and easily transport the resulting debris bundles back to your shredder. The debris bundles are small tier one items so they can be shredded with a medium shredder. If you are still early in your adventure and lack the resources or power required for the larger shredders, these debris bundles provide an excellent opportunity to begin trading scrap for resources. While larger debris cannot be collected in debris bundles, you can utilize packagers to compress large debris into smaller, easier to transport packages. Once you arrive back at your base, simply unpack the debris and drop it into your shredder. Regardless of what item you are scrapping, every single thing that you can scrap has a set value and it is determined almost exclusively by the resources that were used to create the item you wish to turn into scrap. While resources themselves, aside from exochips, cannot be scrapped, they do all have a scrap value that will be taken into account when you shred an item. This graphic shows the scrap value for every resource. You can pause the video if you wish to take a deep dive into this information, though it is also available in both the Astroneer Academy official textbook for this course and on the official Astroneer wiki. Links to both of those resources can be found below. It should be noted that items with a higher scrap value will take longer to shred than those with lower scrap values. Since every resource has a scrap value, each item that you scrap will have a corresponding scrap value. For example, since glass has a scrap value of 0.5, you will receive half a scrap nugget if you place an oxygen tank into a shredder. But what about the items that you cannot create but can be placed into a shredder? Well, those all have a set scrap value as well. It is simply beyond the scope of Ashton Academy to go that deep into the weeds and list the scrap value of every single item that can be scrapped. Thankfully, SDK Phoenix and the others who maintain the official Astroneer Wiki have gone into such detail, so you can visit the wiki's entries for scrap if you want to look up the scrap value for any item, including every possible debris type you may encounter. There is one final way to obtain scrap, and that is as mission rewards. We will not encounter any of those missions for quite some time, however, so we'll wait until their respective courses to discuss those rewards. No matter what you choose to turn into scrap via a shredder, once you have done so, you are halfway done with the shred scrap trade mission. The other half of the mission simply requires that you use that scrap to trade for another resource via the trade platform. Once you do, you'll have completed the mission and can claim a reward of 1QTRTG from the mission log on the nearest landing pad. By the way, that QTRTG is worth four scrap. We have to pause today's course to clarify the sequence of the Shred Scrap Trade mission. Next week, we will be completing the Relocation Package mission in another Astroneer Academy Extra, and that mission is a prerequisite for Shred Scrap Trade.
We did not realize our error in the sequence of these two missions until well after both courses were nearly complete. Instead of delaying both courses, we decided to add this short correction today. We apologize for this error and we will triple check all future courses to ensure mission sequencing issues do not arise again. Now, back to today's course. Scrap is not the only resource you can use to trade with on the trade platform, however. If you scroll down on the control panel, you will discover that you can also use Astronium and Fault Finders, though we will not be discussing the latter in depth until Astronium Academy 402. For now, just know you will eventually be able to use Fault Finders to trade for all composite resources along with QTRTGs, Hybrid Rose Seeds, numerous colors of fireworks, and the beach ball variant of the Recreational Sphere. For our discussion today, let's look at the various items you can obtain by trading Astronium. You can use Astronium to trade for packagers at a ratio of 1 to 4, solid fuel jump jets at a ratio of 1 to 2, dynamite and hydrazines at a ratio of 3 to 4, exochips at a ratio of 3 to 1, and the portable smelting furnace and gravity globe at a ratio of 8 to 1. You may have already noticed that several of these items can be placed into a shredder for scrap, making it possible to indirectly produce scrap from Astronium as well. Personally, I make every effort to obtain as much Astronium as possible as soon as I get access to a trade platform. Why? Well, you may have picked up on my disdain for exochips and the laborious process involved with hunting down exocaches, blowing them up, and then collecting the exochips. I would much rather spend my time digging to the core and collecting Astronium. I also use some of that Astronium to trade for a few portable smelting furnaces and it even comes in handy during certain limited time events. It can even come in clutch if you find yourself short on research bites and lacking research items. Given its broad use cases, it simply makes more sense to me to spend my time collecting Astronium to trade for exochips than hunting down the exocaches. You learned all about land vehicles and their respective augments in Astronaut Academy 106, so you should have have no problem creating a rover that can assist you in collecting Astronium. Today, you have learned how you can trade scrap and Astronium for resources and items, how you can utilize shredders to create scrap, and even learned a bit more about my contempt for exochips. Later today, we will feature an Astronaut Academy quick bite underscoring that last item as we encourage everyone with shorter attention spans to seek out Astronium for their source of exochips. Next week, in another Astronaut Academy Extra, we will discuss several missions that revolve around resource creation and the following week, we will begin our discussion of jet powered transportation. Until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to keep looking to the stars.